Anyhow, in this lesson we say bye 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 to asynchronous counters. Well, that's not entirely true. Asynchronous counters are commonly used, but we'll soon see advantages of synchronous counters. The big one is that because all the flip flops are connected to the same clock, the counts change synchronously and glitches are minimized. Here we see the logic circuit for a 4 bit synchronous binary counter with the ability to count from decimal 0 through 15. First, notice this clock device that connects to the clock ports of all the flip flops. With our asynchronous counters, the flip-flops were always in toggle mode, and we controlled when they sensed a clock pulse. With synchronous counters, the shoe is on the other foot. The flip-flops are always sensing the same clock, but we manage the changes by controlling the instruction input. That instruction control is achieved with these AND gates. But what is the reasoning behind them? Take notice of this key fact about a straight binary count. Each bit will toggle after all less significant bits are high. Let's illustrate this with A2. In this abbreviated table, A2 toggles at this point and at this point. Both cases are on the next row after A1 and A0 are both high. Recall that with synchronous sequential circuits, it is the current state that provides the instructions for the next state. So the row before the toggle is where we need to focus. This statement holds true for A3 as well. We can see that at the bottom. Only after all lesser bits are high should we tell A3 to toggle. It is also true for A1, but the only lesser bit is A0. And as usual, a0 depends on no other bits. It should toggle on every clock cycle. We also have one extra wrinkle in this design, the enable switch. It is not necessary, but it is a nice feature. If we leave en equal to 1, then the count will proceed. But at any point, we can make en equal to 0, which will pause the count. Pause, not clear. There is a different switch for clearing the count. Let's take these ideas to the schematic. If the enable switch is low, then T0 is low, which means the least significant bit will not toggle. Also, it guarantees that all of these AND gates will output 0, so all of the T instructions are low, and all of the flip-flops are in no change mode. The count is paused. But if the enable switch is high, then Q0 will toggle on every clock cycle. Half of the time, Q1 will be instructed to toggle. This occurs on the clock cycles after Q0 is high. But after Q0 is low, this AND gate outputs 0, and Q1 does not toggle. Let's look at Q2. If any of the lesser bits either Q0 or Q1 is low, then this T2 instruction is low. Only in the clock cycle after both Q0 and Q1 are high will T2 be high, thus causing Q2 to toggle. And the pattern continues one more time for the most significant bit. Notice how the circuit reflects the general statement that each bit toggles only after all less significant bits are high, plus the bonus control of the enable switch. Now let's try to design a synchronous decade counter. To accomplish this, we need to identify logic that will send the correct instructions to each flip-flop based on the current state of the machine. Hmm, does this sound familiar? It should. It is just like our earlier studies of sequential circuits. The next state table for the design looks like this. The present state section shows 4 bits, which count from decimal 0 through 9. The next state section shows each of those numbers increase by 1. Take special note of the recycling at the bottom row. Here we see decimal 9 must become 0. 
The flip-flop input section shows what the T instructions must be to enact the necessary changes. For instance, from here to here, Q3 doesn't change, so T3 equals zero. Then from here to here, Q3 does toggle, so T3 equals one. From this table, we can derive these equations, which show T3 through T0 as functions of the present state Q3 through Q0. These equations are simplified by the fact that counts 10 through 15 are don't care states. Obviously, I went a little fast through this table and equation derivation. If you have questions, refer back to our Mealy and Moore machine lessons. In fact, this counter design is simpler than those other designs. Here, we do not have a column for inputs to the circuit. That is because this simple counter always moves on to the next higher number on each clock cycle. No special decisions need to be made. However, if we wanted an enable switch, like in the previous binary counter, we would need to include that input on this table. With those equations, we can build the circuit. Let's see it in action in the simulator. The next state logic down here takes the present count and uses that to send the next count instructions to the flip-flops. Notice that, as usual, the least significant bit is toggling on every clock cycle. Also, does anything else jump out at you? There are no glitches. The output shows a nice clean count. This is a valuable improvement over asynchronous counters. In reality, there still would be very tiny glitches on the order of one nanosecond, simply because no two flip-flops are exactly the same. Even on the same physical chip, two flip-flops will have slightly different propagation delays through them. However, glitches of this length would be negligible, even within most computer applications. We have demonstrated a couple standard synchronous counters. In the next videos, we'll study how we can apply the design process to make counters that go through any sequence.